Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple today released macOS Ventura 13.5.2 security update. This is a very important security update, which has had multiple security advisories by the Center for Internet Security, and it's already been named BlastPass by the Citizen Lab, which is the group that found the issue and reported it to Apple only a week ago. It's important because it's an NSO group, zero click, zero day exploit that has already been exploited in the wild. There's also updates here from Apple's security engineering group on how to protect yourself if you can't update because you can use a lot lockdown mode to be able to block the attack. So we're going to go over all that, including a live demo in installing the update. Plus we're going to go over Open Core Legacy Patcher to make sure that it's okay to install on your unsupported Mac, which has a metal GPU or a non-metal GPU. You're going to want to stick around for this one because we got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. The 13.5.2 wasn't the only update that Apple released today. They released iOS 16.6.1 and iPad OS 16.6.1. There was no update for iOS 15 and there was a Watch OS update for 9.6.1. There was no audio OS or TV OS update. There was also no update for Mac OS Big Sur and Mac OS Monterey. We don't know if those OSs are vulnerable to this vulnerability, but they may be and Apple might not patch these. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on that because Apple has said that only the latest versions of the operating system are going to be protected from all the latest security vulnerabilities. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Our demonstration Mac for installing the update is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air. And if you want to be able to install the security update, all you need to do is go into system settings and then click on general and then click on software update. And you should immediately see the software update or it'll start to check for updates. If it's already checked for an update during the day, you'll see the one here. So to get more information about it, all you need to do is click on more information and we can see the size of the update on this M1 from 13.5.1 is very small at 727 megabytes. That can range if you have a Mac that is an older update because all the updates are cumulative and will include all the previous updates. So the farther you are back in the updates, the bigger the update will be. If you want to install it, you need to do is click on install now and you'll be prompted for the agreement and then type in your user password. And it's going to immediately start to download the update. The update might get a little larger because there's some additional pieces that are downloaded, like for example, Mac OS recovery updates. And well, you'll be able to see that right away once it starts to calculate the time remaining on the update. You can see here it jumped to 1.88 gigabytes. So we definitely had some extra stuff that was downloading in addition to that 700 megabyte estimate that it was initially giving us. And as soon as this finishes downloading, it's going to go into preparing mode and then it's going to restart the system. And we'll come right back up after the restart. Okay, the update is complete. What is the new build version of 13.5.2? It is 22G91. So it only went up one number version from 22G90, which was 13.5.1. And there was no beta release versions for this update. How long did it take to install the 13.5.2 update on this 2020 M1 MacBook Air? Well, I keep track of all those updates and you can see here, it took from start to finish from when it started preparing to the actual installation when it restarted, only eight minutes. And that ties for one of the fastest install times for any Mac OS Ventura update. And that basically matches the 13.4.1. And you can see a pattern here, the larger updates that have like bug fixes in different OS level or application changes take a lot more to install and are larger in size but these smaller point dot security updates are a lot smaller and install a lot faster. What is the size of the Mac OS operating system after installing the update? Well, you can go into the storage tab in general and you can see the Mac OS is showing as 13.84 gigabytes. And I took a quick screenshot before I did the update. It only went up from 83 to 84. So very, very small in size. I always check to make sure if Safari was updated and the 13.5.2 update, Safari was not updated because the security vulnerability was not patched in Safari. And that was actually the same as the 13.5.1 update that also didn't get a Safari update. That's the only time a change was in Mac OS 13.5. Now let's talk about firmware updates. For the 13.5.2, the firmware was not updated on M1 and M2 systems. And just like Safari hasn't changed since 13.5 and the same with the Mac OS loader version for T2 Intel Max, the Bridge OS version was the same. It was not updated since 13.5. Apple did, however, release a macOS Ventura full installer. And this is important because when you're building a brand new machine, you want it to be patched right away with the latest security updates so you're not vulnerable to this exploit right out of the box when you start to use your Mac. So that's great to see that so you can build your USB installers or for anybody in enterprise or education. And for M1 and M2 Macs, the same thing. You can use Apple Configurator 2 to install the 13.5.2 operating system on those so you're secure right away. 
Let's take a look at what's new in macOS Ventura for any bug fixes or feature updates, and there is none. You can see here on Apple is what's new in updates for macOS Ventura. There's only important security fixes that are recommended. And notice how it does not say important bug fixes. So even though they don't list it, this is one important thing that they leave out. So if there was any bug fixes in there, that's what it would say, and security fixes. You can tell right away that this update is focused around security updates only. I also want to always double check if there's anything new in enterprise or education for macOS Ventura. They do not have anything in security updates, only in major updates like 13.4 and 13.5. And now we can talk about the big security vulnerability that I mentioned right in the beginning of the video. Watch OS 9.6.2, so if you got watch OS, make sure you update. And iOS 16.6.1 and iPad OS 16.6.1 and obviously Ventura 13.5.2. Mac OS Sonoma or any of the beta versions, are they protected against this vulnerability? Well, what we first don't know is can the vulnerability affect the new code in the operating system? That's what we're not sure on. But we know that a new beta has not come out since the Citizens Lab let Apple know when the vulnerability was reported. If it was, Apple would have released a new beta right now and it, we just don't know. So it's just unknown if it's affected or not. So, and Apple does not release any security information on beta versions of macOS or iOS for macOS Monterey and Big Sur. Again, we're not sure, but Apple has already stated that they only keep the latest version of macOS mm -hmm. and iOS secure with the latest security vulnerabilities. There's only one security note listed here, CVE 2023-41064. And this is available for macOS Ventura and the impact is processing and maliciously crafted image may lead to arbitrary code execution. Apple's aware of this report that this issue has been actively exploited. An image could be sent to you, whether it's a JPEG and by opening that image from what we know so far, it could lead to code execution. And when we look at the advisory, we can see from the Center for Internet Security, they are recommending that for government and businesses, this is a high security risk. There's a summary of what that could mean. So a successful exploitation of the most severe of these vulnerabilities could allow for arbitrary code execution in the context of a logged in user. Depending on the privileges associated with the user, an attacker could then install programs, view, change or delete data or even create new accounts with full user administrator rights. Users whose accounts are configured to have fewer user rights on a system could be less impacted. What that means is if you're on a company system, for example, and your system account is only a standard user, you might be fairly protected from this particular vulnerability. Now the Citizen Lab group, which is part of the University of Toronto, is the group that reported this into Apple and they're calling it BlastPass. And you can see right off the bat that this is the NSO group and they've been known to create these hacking tools for different scenarios and a zero click zero day exploit and what zero day means the exploit was already out in the wild and being exploited the vendor this in this case Apple has not put out a patch for it that's what what that means for a zero day they go over all the information about that here when they found out they immediately disclosed their finding to Apple and they assisted with the investigation and two CV for Mac OS and for iOS were created. And they're basically telling everybody to update now. The latest find shows that once again, that a civil society is targeted by highly sophisticated exploits and mercenary spyware. Apple's update will secure the devices belonging to regular users, companies, and governments around the globe. The blast pass discovery highlights that the incredible value of our collective cybersecurity and supporting civil society organizations are. And that's true. Any organization or security expert it is finding these exploits and letting Apple know is protecting us all because Apple can fix those exploits immediately. With the help of Apple Security Engineering, that they believe that lockdown mode can block this particular attack. So why would you even need to do that if you're installing the update? Well, for example, we don't know about Sonoma. We don't know about iOS 17 beta. So if you're in a vulnerable situation and you have secure data, whether you're government or a person of interest, you might want to enable lockdown mode until you know more information about this. So let's talk about how to enable lockdown mode if you want to be able to protect yourself from this situation. This is Apple's website that talks about lockdown mode and it tells you how 
how to enable it and what it does. So basically what Apple's saying is lockdown mode is an optional extreme protection that is designed for very few individuals who, because of who they are and what they do, might be personally targeted by some of the most sophisticated digital threats. Most people are never targeted by the attacks of these nature. When it's enabled, your device won't function like it typically does to reduce the attack surface that could potentially be exploited by highly targeted mercenary spyware, certain apps, websites, and features that are strictly limited for security and some experiences might not be available at all. And then lockdown of mode is available in iOS 16, iPad OS 16 and Mac OS Ventura. So notice how there's no Mac OS Monterey listed here and no iOS 15. So if you have those versions, you can't even use lockdown mode to protect yourself. Let's look at how lockdown mode is enabled. You go into your settings in the privacy and security under security, you can tap lockdown mode. And what it'll do is you click turn on and restart. You have to type in your passcode before you can actually enable that. So now let's take a look at Mac OS. In Mac OS, in security and privacy, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see lockdown mode. And that gives you the same information that that page does. So all you need to do is click on turn on and then type in your password here. And then you will be able to enable that, restart, and you will be in lockdown mode. And when you're done, you'll see lockdown mode is enabled here and you'll be able to turn that off. Now, again, keep in mind, this would only be in certain situations where you're unable to install that update. If you install the update, you'd be protected against that. But if there is any reason you can't install the update, whether it's blocked for your company or whatever, this might be able to help protect you against that exploit. Now let's go over some benchmarks. For the 13.5.1, we had a 2366 for a single core and an 8604 for a multi-core. Core for 13.5.2, we had a 2363 and an 8595. So it was really close and it's exactly what we were looking for. We didn't want to see any big discrepancies. Now let's talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs. And this is a perfect example of why you being able to install a newer version of Mac OS on your older Mac can keep you secure against this latest threat that might be in Mac OS Big Sur or Mac OS Monitor or older versions of Mac OS. First demonstration Mac here is a 2014 11-inch MacBook Air. We are running the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.6.8 and we have Mac OS 13.5.2 installed on it. And before we update, we made sure we had the latest version of Open Core and we made sure we had the latest version of the Poets install root patches and everything is working fine. We've got our Bluetooth, we got our Wi-Fi, and we do not see any noticeable issues. So we're working really well on our metal compatible GPU Mac. Now, again, this does not take into account all 73 models, but it gives us a good idea that we don't see anything major on our metal GPU Mac. So now let's talk about our non-metal GPU Mac, which in our demonstration Mac here today is a early 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro. I left it in this situation because I kind of wanted to do a half demo. So what I did is it was on 13.5 and I installed the 13.5.2 on it and it just finished the restart. So what I want to be able to do here is you can tell right away that we do not have accelerated graphics. So we're going to have to log in, let the automatic patcher kick in. Okay, we're on the desktop. Now remember, we're going to be a little bit slow. We can tell by our dock we are not transparent. We do not have those root patches installed after the update. What's happening now is Spotlight indexing in and all these services right after the update are kicking in. So it'll be a little bit slow. The launch daemon should have kicked off, and there we go. We've got our launch daemon for the automatic patcher that is telling us exactly what we want to see. Open Core Legacy Patcher has detected that you're running without root patches. Would you like to install them? The following patches are available for this 2011 the Terrascale 2, Sandy Bridge, and Legacy Keyboard Backlight. Would you like to apply these patches? Okay. If for some reason this doesn't come up, like something's not working with the automatic patcher, it's okay. Just run the Open Core Legacy Patcher app and then click Install Root Patches, and it's going to do the same thing. So we'll click on OK. We'll type in our administrator patch password and okay. And there we go. It did not detect that there's a new KDK and it is installing the one that we used before, the 13.5.1 that it had cached there. We're good to go. We'll let this finish up the KDK install and it'll finish up here in just a second. All right, the patches are installed and all we need to do is reboot to apply them and then restart. All right, we are back up. Let's log in. And our dock is transparent, so we're looking really good here with this update. We got our Wi-Fi. Now, remember, I did mention in the previous video for macOS 13.5.1, there was an issue with Bluetooth on 2011 MacBook Pros. The word is that that is fixed in an Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.6.9, which should be coming out soon, but there's no exact date. So we'll keep an eye on that. As soon as that comes out, I'll definitely do an update video to keep you informed on that. 
Now comes the recommendation. Do I recommend installing the 13.5.2 update? 100% yes. In the previous video, 13.5.1, it was not a full recommendation because it only fixed certain things that might not have affected anybody. And there's no security fixes in there, so there wasn't a recommendation. But in this case, this is a serious enough recommendation that I think you should install it if you can, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.